Hey there guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson 46 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about arrow functions. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 46. Let's learn all about arrow functions. Arrow functions were first introduced in the ES6 update and they basically provide a new and shorter way to write anonymous function expressions. Another important thing to note before we dive into some code is that arrow functions are always anonymous. So if you want to invoke them, they must be assigned to a variable. Remember, arrow functions are a new and improved way of writing function expressions. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. First, let's create a normal function expression and then we'll see how we can rewrite that as an arrow function. So in our text editor here, I'm going to say const sum and we'll say function. This will take two parameters, a and b. And then in our code block, we'll simply return a console log of a plus b. Okay, and then down here, let's invoke the function and supply two numbers. Let's just go for five and five. Okay, so if we save, okay, no surprises there. In the console, we get the number 10. Now let's see how we can rewrite this as an arrow function. So I'll just add a little comment saying arrow function. And once again, we need to assign this to a variable. So I'm going to say const, let's call this sum2 this time. And then we'll assign this to the arrow function. So the first thing to note about arrow functions is that we can omit the function keyword. So instead of writing function, we can just go straight to the parentheses here. So let's put them in along with our parameters. And then we say equals and a more than sign. So this is the arrow syntax here. And then finally, we have our curly braces as normal. And then once again, we can just return the same thing for our sum2 function. So let's go ahead and try this out. So we'll say sum2, supply two numbers. Let's go for the same numbers again, five and five, let's save. And once again, we get 10 in the console. At the moment then, if we take a look at this, we can say that, yeah, there's a slight improvement with using our functions, but nothing major really. All that's really happened so far is we've been able to remove the function keyword. And instead, after the parentheses here, we're using this arrow syntax. Now, if this was the only difference, then there wouldn't be much use in using an arrow function. But of course, there are some other really cool things that we can do. So let's take a look at what they are. Let's first start with the parentheses. So if we have an arrow function where we have more than one parameter, so here we have a and b, then we must use the parentheses like we're doing here. Also, if we had no parameters for our function, so let's just remove these, and let's just say we were console logging, hey, then here then, we would need to use a parentheses again. So if we have more than one parameter, we would need the parentheses. If we have no parameters at all, then we would once again still need the parentheses. But if we only have a single parameter, so let's say we said, hey, first name, and we put the parameter in here. So if we only have a single parameter, then what we can do is we can remove the parentheses like so. So if we save and supply an argument first, let's just save. And as you can see, that works as normal. Now that's not all because we can also do some cool things with the function body. So arrow functions introduced something called concise body syntax or implicit return, meaning the return keyword is included by default in one line expressions. So let's go ahead and create a new example now. So we'll say const game. And let's say for this, we're simply returning the string Sonic. Okay, so down here, and in fact, let's just get rid of the function expression now as well. So down here, if we console log and invoke our function, in the console, we get Sonic. So in this example, our function body is a single line expression that returns something. And when we have this, what we can do is we can actually remove the return keyword. Remember, arrow functions use an implicit return, but we can also remove the curly braces like so. And this is a lot shorter now. It's all in one line. It looks a lot cleaner. And if we save, that still works. We get Sonic in the console. Now, what if the actual body of the arrow function is a block of code? Well, if that's the case, then the return value is as it would be in a standard function. That is undefined if there is no return statement and the value of the return expression if there is. So for example, here, let's add in a parameter called title. And what we're going to return is the following block of code. So we're going to say, let fave game assign the value of title. And then we're going to return fave game like so. And then down here, we simply need to supply Sonic as an argument and then let's save. 
and once again read Sonic in the console. So here then, since our function doesn't just consist of a single line expression, but rather multiple statements and we're returning something, we need to use the curly braces here. Now, one of the biggest differences between arrow functions and other types of functions isn't just how they're written. It's also the fact that arrow functions do not have their own this binding. So basically, the value of this in an arrow function is determined by the surrounding scope or the lexical environment. Now, we haven't looked at the lexical environment yet, but we will do in a few lessons time. But we have learned about the this keyword a few lessons ago. I'll leave a link somewhere to it. But essentially, the this keyword is mainly used when we have functions inside of objects. Functions inside of objects are known as methods and the this keyword refers to the object that is responsible for executing the function. So let's see what we mean by arrow functions not having their own this binding. So here then we have an object called game. We've got four properties, title, year, platform, and console. And then we've got two functions inside of this game object. We've got a regular function, and then we've got an arrow function. Let's now call both of these functions. So we're gonna say game.regular function and we'll also say game dot arrow function. Before we do that, let's actually see what's going on inside of these functions. So you can see as a comment here, I've put with a regular function that this keyword represents the object that calls the function. So as you can see, both functions are calling the same thing. Console log, the game is called this dot title. And again, for the arrow function, we've got the game is called this dot title. So they're both logging the same thing, but with an arrow function, the this keyword represents the owner of the function. And the owner of this function is the global window object. So let's just save and let's see what we get. With a regular function inside of an object, we're able to say this.title and it refers to the property. So we get the game is called Sonic the Hedgehog. But with an arrow function, when we try to use this, what we get is undefined. So we shouldn't use arrow functions as direct methods if we know we want to access properties in the object using this. So here we should stick with the regular function. But let's see what happens when we have a function inside of our methods. So here then we have another example. So once again we have this game object and inside this we have different properties. Title, related, year, platform and console. And of importance is this related property which is an array. Okay, so it's an array of different games. And then down here we have a normal function. And then inside that, we're targeting the related property and we're using a for each loop to loop through this array. So let's go ahead and call this. So we're gonna say game dot show related. Let's save and let's see what we get in the console. So here we have an example of a method with a function inside of that method. And it's that inner function that is trying to target this dot title. And as you can see, that doesn't work. We get undefined. Now, the reason why we get undefined is because the this keyword here references the global window object. And that's because it's within this anonymous function that is passed into our for each method. And so it doesn't refer to the game object, it refers to the global window object. So this is where arrow functions shine when related to the this keyword. So here we can simply use an arrow function instead. So first of all, we can remove this function keyword. Okay, and let's add in our arrow syntax. Like so. So this now is an arrow function inside of our method. Let's go ahead and save. And now you can see that works absolutely fine. So why does this work? Because remember in arrow functions, the value of the this keyword is determined based upon the lexical scope. The anonymous inner function called in the for each method can now access the properties of the outer game object. So using arrow functions in built-in array methods like this helps us to access object properties and it makes our lives a lot easier. Okay, so that's all about arrow functions. Let's go ahead and summarize. So arrow functions were introduced in the ES6 update and they provide a new and shorter way to write function expressions. Since arrow functions are anonymous, they must always be assigned to a variable. We can write arrow functions in different ways depending on things such as the amount of parameters and what we return in the function body. And finally, arrow functions do not have their own this binding, but rather they have lexical this, meaning the value of this in arrow functions is determined by the surrounding scope. Okay, so let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So three tasks for this lesson. For task number one, I want you to rewrite the following function as an arrow function. So here we have a function called user, takes the parameter name, and then we're simply returning my name is name. For task two, rewrite the following function as an arrow function. So we're saying const greeting is assigned the value of this function. And finally, for task three, I want you to fix the following function. So here we have an object called book, and we have this show related function here. How can we use the arrow function to fix this? So as always guys, go ahead and pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. 
So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for task number one, we need to rewrite the following function as an arrow function. So let's just go ahead and copy this, paste this in. So what we have here is a function declaration. To rewrite this as an arrow function, we can simply say const user is assigned the value of the following parentheses, and we have a parameter of name, then we create our arrow syntax, space, curly braces, and here we're returning my name is name. Now, another thing we can do here, since we're only using a single parameter, we can omit these parentheses. And also, since we have a single line expression that's returning something, we can put this on a single line and we can get rid of these curly braces, as well as the return keyword. Okay, so let's go ahead and invoke this function. So I'll say console.log, let's just remove this one for now. Console.log and this function is called user and it takes a single argument of name. So let's save and we get my name's Amit in the console. So that's task number one. For task number two, we need to rewrite this function expression as an arrow function. So let's just uh, paste this in. And here then to turn this into an arrow function, we can remove the function keyword. Let's add our arrow syntax. And once again, since we're returning a single line, we can just remove the curly braces and remove the return keyword as well. And then down here, let's invoke our function and we get the statement logged to the console. And then finally, for task number three, we need to fix the following function. So let's go ahead and copy all this, paste this object in, let's invoke the method first. So we're gonna say book dot show related to see what we get. Okay, so we get title undefined. So once again, what we need to do here is turn this into an arrow function. So let's get rid of the function keyword. Let's include our arrow syntax. And here we would need to keep the curly braces because we're not returning a single line expression, but rather multiple statements. So let's go ahead and save. And now that works perfectly fine. We get title, the fellowship of the ring. So guys, well done in completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about JavaScript timing events. And as you come to see, these are really, really cool. They allow us to do things such as invoke a function after a set period of time, and even repeatedly invoke a function every X amount of seconds. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.